Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave from the Camera Store. If you want to take better pictures of the stars, this is going to be a great episode. We're talking about the Skywatch Star Adventurer 2i. We live in an area where we have these great wide open skies with some amazing stars to look at at night, but I've never been able to really capture them how I wanted to. Now there are some devices out there to make that whole process easier and get much better results, but I've always found them a bit intimidating. We brought along a special guest today, Monica Devia, who knows all about these things. She owns one of these units. She's got some amazing results with it. She's going to walk us through the basic setup and how to get some great results. Hey Monica. Hey Dave. Hey, thanks for joining us today. So you are going to take us through this and set this whole thing up because it looks really complicated to me. Yeah, so I do love using my star tracker. It's a pretty handy tool for night photography. So as you know, when you're out at night, it's quite dark. Yeah. And we're pushing our camera. Unlike limits. today. Yes. We're in the daytime. <laughs> Just for today. demonstration purposes. <laughs> um, so you know, we're shooting at high ISOs. Um, we've got lenses. We're trying to have them wide open, 2.8 or faster, ideally. And then we're trying to pick an appropriate shutter speed where our stars still look like pinpoints instead of little trails because they do to us appear to move through the sky but really it's us rotating um, so what the star tracker will do is move your camera at the same rate that the stars move through the sky and so you can shoot for longer you can lower your iso excellent and, yeah. so you're basically countering the earth's rotation yeah well. going with it so we've got our tripod set up. It's somewhat tall right now, but not too tall, so we can easily play with things. But I'll talk about heights and stuff a little bit later, too. Okay. Yeah. So I've put the equatorial wedge onto the tripod already, and this guy has a level on it. So we do need to level the system, but first we're going to pretend that I found north. You can do this by using a compass, say on your phone, you can get an app, uh, line it up, or if you're out at night, you can find Polaris, um, North Star, which is just off of um, celestial north and it's usually between the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia so line it up as best as you can and then you go ahead with the leveling process <laughs> all right so we've got this leveled and then the next thing we're going to put on is our polar scope and basically the main unit so we're just gonna slide that into place and then our next step would be to figure out and set our longitude here um, so we're at 51 degrees north, so we could just set it to that. And I'll just refine it, find 51, lock it in place. Okay, so I'm going to loosen the clutch, and then I'm going to look through the scope, but basically what we're going to do is just move this around so that there's some crosshairs in there. We're going to orient them so that 6 is down, 0 is up. So okay. once you've got your crosshairs oriented so 0 is up, 6 is down, we're going to do our polar alignment. So we need to place Polaris on a certain point on a circle that's around our crosshairs. Hey Monica, you have the older version of this, version one. Mm -hmm. This is a new version, it has Wi-Fi built in. So we have an app, of course, that we can use to control this, which really adds, I think, another level of uh, involvement, but also a level of control, which mm -hmm. you don't have with yours. Yes. Uh, the other thing the app has is um, a portion that helps you do the polar alignment, but what I've been using is an app called Polar Scope Align Pro. Um, so basically with this, I look at it, I can set a time, I can set a location, and then it tells me where I need to have Polaris on this ring that's around the crosshairs. So if I'm going off the grid, say I won't have reception, I can't use my app, or I just want to plan ahead, um, I can punch in a location, uh, longitude, latitude, and all that. I can punch in a date and time. I can take a few screenshots if I want to have them for reference throughout the night mm, and then if I need to realign at any point because I'm changing my compositions, hopefully not making mistakes. <laughs> Polaris is the North Star, but it's actually just off of the Celestial North Pole and that's basically an invisible point that doesn't move. So we basically that's the point we see all the stars move around in the sky. So Polaris actually makes a small circle around it and you see that in any star trails if you've shot those. Um, there's not a bright point in the center. Polaris actually moves around a bit. So that's why we use like one of these apps to figure out where it might be in that little circle around the actual celestial north. So when we're looking through the polar scope, we should be able to see Polaris in our field of view. And all we're going to do is refine the adjustment, get it into that spot that the app will help us find, lock everything up nice and tight, and then you're 
pretty much ready to go. Yeah. You just got to set up the Perfect. camera. Bit so next. once this is set up, this sort of stays stationary. I don't need to adjust this anymore yes. once we've done it properly. If you move anything at all, so if you tap your tripod, nudge anything, you're going to have to do this whole process, the alignment <laughs> process over again. <laughs> so now that we're set up, we can start attaching the camera. All right, here's the exciting part. Yes. So there's two ways to do this. I'll pull out both pieces. So there's a ball head adapter. So this can just slide in and then you can put your tripod ball head on there and mount your camera as long as it's small enough, light enough, which a lot of cameras yep, are these days. Um, if you're going for something larger, then you're gonna use your L bracket and we would put the ball head on there. But basically this guy is just gonna slide into place and we'll lock it in. And now, so we've aligned everything here. So as long as we don't move anything, we're fine, but we can rotate this for changing how our composition is or where our camera goes. So okay. we're gonna to toss a ball head on. Okay. And then we'll toss the camera on that just to give us more maneuverability. Yeah, so we brought along the Nikon Z7 II today. So it's not an extremely heavy camera, um, but if we do have a really heavy camera on here, is there a balancing issue with yeah. this setup? Yeah, so there is a weight and we'll put that on just to demo. So this is in case if you find that the motor is laboring a little bit too much uh, or yeah. you just feel it's a little bit off balance, you have the ability to put a counterweight on this. There we go. So we've got our counterweight attached. So now if we want to check the balance, basically I'm just going to loosen the clutch and try and put everything horizontal. And as you can see right now, it wants to still tilt. Um, so maybe we'll move the weight. Cool. It doesn't matter how you rotate this, you know, like where we start, if we, as long as we change our, if I lock it here and then change my framing to what I want. Oh, no, you can totally make a difference do that. All. Okay. And then, yeah, of course, if, so again, we were pretending that this was north. If I wanted to shoot the Milky Way, I would actually have the camera pointing towards me instead. So you can rotate wherever you need to, okay. as long as you don't touch any of this. <laughs> <laughs> and if this was my composition, I would turn on my star tracker to the star symbol. I would set my camera to go and I would let it run. Uh, after I take my sky shots, whether it's one or multiples, because maybe I want to do stacking for noise, I turn everything off and then I do my foreground shots. Because of course, if the camera's moving, then your foreground is blurring. So there is usually the night sky and a foreground, um, but you can do deep space uh, astrophotography. So photographing things like nebulas, but today we're going to focus on more of the setup for wider shots. Fair enough. That's probably the majority of people are actually out looking for, I would imagine. We kind of got it all set up here, but this little device has got a whole bunch of different modes to it. Can you tell me a little bit more about the dial on the other side? Yeah, so we can flip it to the astrophotography mode, which will be the star on the dial. It also can track the sun, it can track the moon, it can do time lapses. So for example, we could set this so it points straight up and then we could do a panning time lapse if you wanted and it has a couple speeds for that. Okay, so this wasn't nearly as complicated a setup as I was thinking it was going to be. It all comes down to sort of preparation, visualizing what you want to shoot, but also this unit right here and aligning it wasn't as complicated as I thought it was going to be either. So what are your top three tips, if we can narrow it down to that many, to get great results with this device? Yeah, so for someone who's just getting a tracker, starting out with it, do you practice in the daylight, inside, outside, wherever, just to get comfortable with the system, know what everything is, how it works, um, then actually get out at night when it's not something very exciting and amazing, <laughs> like actually go for a practice session. And then do you spend the time to work on the polar alignment and getting that refined and figured out? Because that is the tricky part. Um, but you know, if you do want to get really great results, if you want to shoot for really long times, if you want to do longer focal lengths, you're gonna have to get that down. <laughs> <laughs> great, well, thanks for joining us today. This has been a great first uh, sort of introduction into this for me. Thanks very much, Monica. Thanks for having me. Well, that was fantastic. I have to admit, I was intimidated going into this wondering, I really don't know what I'm talking about, but Monica made it very clear and easy to understand that it's not that bad to set one of these up and get some really good results. And even if you don't have the latest and greatest camera equipment, you can still shoot F4 lenses and get some great quality results. Now, I of course want to know what you guys think of the Star Adventurer. Do you already have one? Do you have a good experience with it? Is it something that you want to add to your kit and really step up your astrophotography game? Let me know in the comments down below. Follow us both on Instagram and please subscribe, hit that notification notification bell and we'll catch you again next time.
Thanks for sticking around and watching this recent episode. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian and you want to shop local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.